Step two, hope. I believe that the power of God can restore me to complete spiritual health. That just feels fun and exciting to me, um, that prospect of just having complete, healthy, spiritual well-being. Um, and the fact that there is a power out there that can bring me to that place and in many ways has already brought me to that place. Um, in the workbook, it says, when we first came to these meetings, we were filled with doubts and fears, and we were frightened and possibly even cynical, but at least we came. And maybe that's where you're at now. Maybe your higher power isn't my higher power. Maybe you don't have a higher power. Maybe... You're just looking at this and you went through week one and you were so hesitant and kind of kicking against the pricks and just like, what the crap am I doing here? Please stay, please stay. Um, because that's what they said that they were feeling. They were feeling doubtful. They had so many fears, were self-conscious, um, were frightened and cynical. Um, which I think was is a form of self-protection sometimes. But as they kept coming, they experienced in the one, two, three, third paragraph, hope. That turned into hope. And hope is step two, okay? And they say, um, it says in here, the foundation of recovery from addiction must be spiritual. I believe this inside and out. No matter what your spirituality is or isn't, it has to be spiritual because our own willpower is not enough. That's what got you to this place. You tried over and over again so many different things and it's never worked out. Um, but this, what you're doing here, week one, week two, and the next 10 weeks, it is worth the effort. I know it's hard, I know it's uncomfortable, but it is worth the effort. I loved in Preston's story, in Preston's story, when we get on our group call, I'm gonna give you an update on Preston. Um, this is so random, but about a year ago, I ran into his mother, <laughs> really weird. Um, and so I want to share with you in our video kind of how he's doing now and give you an update. But at the very beginning of Preston's video, he talked about driving along and just, I can't remember if it was driving into a pole or like off the road and wanting to die. That is a reflection of my experience. I don't know how many times like in my darkest and lowest of lows, I have thought the same things. Like, I just want to drive off the road into a wall, off a little cliffy doodad, and just be done. Just be done. And he said that his rock bottom was fear. And I've been thinking a lot lately about what has been my rock bottom. And I want you to think about that. And if you know, share. What has been your rock bottom? My rock bottom were those moments for me and I think it was fear. I'm not quite 100% sure, but I think mine was fear too of when I had those thoughts and those experiences of, hey, I just want to drive my car off the freaking road. That scared me. Those thoughts scared me. Those suicidal thoughts or those thoughts that I had where I just wanted to end things or that I life wasn't worth or that nobody would care. Nobody would care um, if I was gone. And, and I know that's not true, but like when I was having those thoughts and that narrowness of mind, um, that freaked me out. That was scary for me. And I think that really was my rock bottom. I think it was. Um, so action steps. First it says, pray, read, and ponder the scriptures. Um, that's whatever your scripture is, read it, study it, okay? Pray, however you pray, but do it. Do these things. Let that be your focus this week, okay? And I love how it says in here, you know, God um, might, not, may, 
not always answer us with a yes, but he will always answer us with love. And I want to talk about this a little bit because I think we want love from God to always feel fluffy and delightful. Um, and I would say that the majority of the time it does. But sometimes God's love is hard. It is chastising. It doesn't feel comfortable and good, but it doesn't mean that it's not love because it is that kind of response um, that brings us to where we need to be, okay? Um, so I love that. God won't always answer us with a yes, but he will always answer us with love. And the second action step is believe in God, the eternal father, and in his son, Jesus Christ, and in the Holy Ghost. And what I love about this is that there is a difference of believing in God, believing in Christ, and believing God, believing Christ, right? So, yes, I believe in God and I believe in Jesus Christ. But then do I believe that they will actually do the things that they have said they, that they will do? This is something that I struggle with is I believe in them and I believe them that they will do what they will say they will do for other people. <laughs> but I don't always believe that they will do what they say they will do for me. I have a disconnect that I consciously have to work on to try to um, bridge that gap. Um, and a big way of doing that is by reading, studying, pondering, praying the scriptures and reading the scriptures and praying. Um, and so those are the things that I want to share with you today. And I know that if you haven't already felt hope, that as you continue on this path, that you will feel hope. Um, and I'm excited to, to read and hear about your experiences. Talk to you soon. Bye.